For 30 years now, adventure films have been the most popular. The related genre of action films come in a close second. We laugh hilariously at well-scripted comedies, are enthralled by tense dramas, and comforted by touching love stories. The ticket sales prove adventure attracts us most. What is it about the episodes of franchises like Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, Harry Potter, Fast and Furious, Star Wars, Pirates of the Caribbean, Hunger Games, and Lord of the Rings, or one-offs like E.T., Lion King, and The Revenant, every one of which has yielded more than half a billion dollars in box office sales. What is it about the endless stream of blockbusters from the Marvel and DC universes that we can't seem to get enough of? Exhilarating special effects and electrifying deeds, gripping storylines and some good acting all help. But what really grabs us, I think, is that adventure stories make us feel alive. The energy and excitement, highs and lows, danger and surprises, exaggerate but also correlate to our own experience as lead actors pursuing goals amidst obstacles. Other stories, of course, go well beyond our experience, exciting our imaginations and inspiring us to more. More meaning, purpose, effort. Calling us to become the hero in our own story and do great things in the future. There's adventure in many spheres of life, and education is undeniably one of them. When we set out on our schooling journey, we are usually young and impressionable, naive or driven, but unsure of ourselves, hopefully open to learning more about God, the world, ourselves. The same is true for the students. To be sure, each brings talents and experience to the adventure. We are not blank pages for the teachers or students to write upon. But we discover and hone our natural gifts and have many of the most formative experiences along the way. No such adventure is a one-actor movie. Along the way, we encounter a full cast of supporting characters, classmates and teammates, confidants and long life, lifelong friends, inspirational and persistent teachers, mentors and role models, stirring disciples and spiritual guides, and personalities agreeable or challenging, stimulating or dull. Each plays a part in making school rich and memorable. More than mere background, they are constituents of what schooling is. Put so many people together with a common purpose and over a course of years, and you have an institution. 
It's not only individuals that have adventures, but institutions also. A two centuries old institution will inevitably have been through quite an evolution with a large cast of actors, numerous plot twists and character developments. The original producer-director of the Cathedral College adventure movie is buried beneath us in the crypt. Father John Joseph Terry, first official Catholic chaplain to the colony, who established an elementary school to the east of St Mary's Chapel on this site in 1824. The Hyde Park Chapel School was conducted by Mr Thomas Byrne. When John Bede Polding was appointed bishop, the chapel became a cathedral and the school was promoted to a minor seminary or secondary school for novices and laity taught by Benedictine monks. The cast list was expanding. After the seminary closed in the early 1860s, St Mary's School was operated by lay teachers. By the 1880s, it had such excellent results that a whopping 260 children were in the primary and as many again in the infants, making it the largest religious school in the colony. But when several of the teachers entered the Sisters of Charity, and the government stopped all aid to church schools, it was time for another plot twist, this time directed by Archbishop Roger Vaughan. In 1883, St Mary's reopened as two schools. St Mary's Cathedral Girls' School, headed by a Sisters of Charity novice, Sister Mary Berkmans, and an enrolment of 700 girls and a staff of sisters. And St Mary's Cathedral Boys School conducted by the Maris brothers at the opposite end of the site. From 1887, they took secondary students as well. New buildings were in order, but there was competition for space with a much larger cathedral being gradually constructed after the first burnt down. In 1912, Archbishop Michael Kelly blessed and opened a new structure with a Christian Brothers Boys School on the ground floor and a Charity Sisters Girls School on the two floors above. Separate stairways and playgrounds minimised any mingling. The brothers extended the program to intermediate and eventually leaving certificate, while the sisters established a commercial college offering young women business courses. The shift to the suburbs presented new challenges to the college, and partly to entice enrolments from outside the CBD, Brother Geiger registered it as a choir school in the 1940s. It became a musical centre of excellence with a world-class choir to this day. But by the 1960s, the old school building, built for 550 students, now had more than double that many. As the site could no longer accommodate two schools, the girls moved elsewhere and the boys' school ceased junior primary except for choristers. By the late 1980s, Brother Hoffman led the college into exile in Waverton while a new school and presbytery were built. In 1992, all returned to state-of-the-art buildings, rebranded St Mary's Cathedral College. While the ethnicity and haircuts in the year 12 photos have varied down the years, 
and the brothers finally completed their service. The mission of developing young Christian all-rounders has continued. High academic results, musical excellence, sporting success, pastoral care, community service, and a close relationship to the cathedral have characterised the college through its now 200-year-long adventure. Where next for the college under Principal Kerry McDermott? Will it be entering Jurassic Park or Rivendell? Raiding a lost ark or finding Nemo? Well, in 2025, the college will be co-ed once again, but this time without separating the sexes. It will be K to 12. A major new building is in the pipeline. And I'm pleased to announce, though I've been gazumped by the newspapers, that a St Mary's Cathedral girls' choir will complement the boys' choir with each chorister receiving a full scholarship. It's said that to know where you're going, it helps to know where you've come from. So in the words of the prophet Isaiah, we sing the Lord's praises for his goodness to us in the days of yore and for making us sons and no rogues. Four religious congregations lent their charisms to that project. So did the wider Catholic educational system. So also umpteen principals and staff, students, families and friends of the college. It has survived many challenges, adapting to the circumstances of young people in the evolving colony, nation and culture bringing them to Christ. In our Gospel today, Luke recounts St Mary's Magnificat, sung soon after an angel announced the greatest adventure of all time. She acknowledges that God's mercy has stretched from generation to generation and responds with thanksgiving and exhilaration. But she also looks forwards in confidence and mission, for God's mercy has been promised to Abraham's descendants forever. All our individual adventures as Christians are ultimately connected, all subjects within the great divine drama. All are important actors in that great story. Children of God in need of salvation, but also, like Mary, able to be blessed and exalted. The script for this greatest ever adventure movie, Mary Sings, is God's plan, promised to our ancestors carried forward by generations and embraced by us from this day forward. Boys of St Mary's and soon girls as well. Principal, staff and friends, yours is a holy adventure and you are blessed to have St Mary help of Christians as your example, your guide, your intercessor. May you continue to thrive in your third century as an educationally excellent, musically glorious, humanly admirable and spiritually infectious college. Congratulations to 100-year-olds. Our Lady, help of Christians, pray for us.